Praise God, everyone. Uh, my name is Jane Washira. I come from PCA, Kariobangi South. Uh, today being the Special Awareness Sunday, we call it Disability Awareness Sunday. I am one of those who is also having a disability. As you can see, I have a skin disability. We all suffer from different disabilities. Some are physical, some cannot even be seen. Like we call it Deaf Awareness Sunday in our church, we have a deaf ministry. These people, you may think they, are, they can talk, but they can't talk. And that is why they use the sign language. To them, us, we are the ones who are disabled because we may not be able to interpret the sign language. But we are all equal at the bottom of the cross. And that is why we are supposed to embrace each other. Whether they are, we are different than the others, we should embrace every one of us. Uh, like it is said, we are all created in the goodness and the likeness of our Lord, isn't it? So we are all the same, isn't it? So we should embrace one another. Uh, the leading word today was coming from the book of Deuteronomy. As a, I wish the person could display the theme of this service on the, on the screen. If that, if that is possible. The theme is talking about maintaining the family altar. When we all come to church, we call ourselves a family, isn't it? Or are we not family? And so there should be no divisions am among us, isn't it? Because we are all joined by the cords of love. Because Christ is love, isn't it? When he came to this world, he came and died for each one of us, isn't it? So that we are all partakers of eternity. What are we all longing for? We are all longing to go and meet our Savior in heaven, isn't it? And so, as the call to worship was telling us in Deuteronomy 6, 4 to 9, it was telling us that we should maintain the family altar. Where do the families start? They start in our homes, isn't it? Because that is where we are, those who have, who have children are blessed with children, isn't it? And we, are to, we have to bring them, bring them up to be God-fearing. Most of us, we were taken to church by our parents when we were children and we were baptized into the Christian faith. Isn't that true? And so the family altar starts at home. And that was our call to worship. So we may ask ourselves, what is a family? What is an altar? What is to maintain? An altar is like you have seen here. It is a raised platform made of stones, metal, dirt, or wood on which sacrifices are made to God, isn't it? That's why this place is raised. This is where we receive the word of God. This is where we get preachings from. The children are brought here and they are baptized. People are brought here so that they are brought to church. And that is where the anointed men of God preach and give us the word of God. What is a family? Uh, their parents and children, children are descended from a common ancestor, common characteristics and a common source, a family tree, a genealogical tree, or chart. We even see in the book of Matthew, in the, uh, we, when we read it, we are given the genealogy of Christ. Why should we know our genealogy? Because all our genealogy leads to Christ, isn't it? 
because we are all coheres with Christ. Those who have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, they are all filled with the Holy Spirit and they have a right to become children of God. And that makes us coheres with Christ, doesn't it? What will take us to heaven? It is accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior because he is our advocate before our Lord, isn't it? So when we come to church, we come to be fed with the word of God. So what is to maintain? Is to keep up, continue, support, keep in certain condition. So uh, in a good condition, good repair. And so that means that Christianity that we received when we were baptized in the name of our Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we should maintain that condition. What is that condition of righteousness? Isn't it? It's only the righteous who shall see the face of God. We all desire to see the face of God, isn't it? Unless we are righteous, we shall not see the face of God. We shall not have a relationship with our God. It is idolatry to worship any other God. In this present life we are living, there are so many other gods people do worship, and you might be also part of them, because we worship wealth, we worship beauty, we worship positions, and all that is idolatry and many others. God is the absolute governor of the universe. God is holy, meaning that he is utterly pure and incapable of sin or evil. As we say, see in Isaiah so chapter 6, verse 1 to 5, he likewise calls his people be holy. That is in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 15 to 16. To be holy means to be sacred, set apart from what is common for service to the holy God. A person or thing is made holy or sanctified. And how do we get sanctified? By the blood of sacrifice. And the blood that, was, that is for sacrifice for us as Christians is the blood of Jesus which, who was sinless and was ready to come and die for us. He became sin so that we may receive his righteousness. Sin makes, us, makes a person desanctified or unclean. Christ is a fitting sacrifice for all our sins. Because he was with no sin. By his death on the cross, Jesus made himself as a sacrifice to atone for the sins of believers. Believers are to offer their bodies as living sacrifices to God, as we see, as we see in Romans chapter 12, verse 1. God makes believers his children through the atoning death and the resurrection of his one and only true son. That is Jesus in Romans chapter 8 and Galatians chapter 4. So, when we come to church and we are preached to, and we go out the same way we came in, what does that mean? It means we have denied that gift of salvation that is freely given to them that are ready to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Jesus is our advocate before God the Father. So why do we deny him? We should accept him so that we have a, an advocate before our Father, who is God. In Psalm 116, 
This is a hymn of personal thanksgiving for God's care. The specific circumstances in the narrow escape from death, as we have been read. The psalm shows that such thanksgiving for a very personal blessing is properly offered in public worship. The people of Israel are asked to love the Lord in response to his covenant blessings. Because he, ha he has heard our voice. We are also children of God. So he has heard our voice and we have a covenant with him. The words of Psalm 116 are excellent, excellent for expressing public uh, sacrifice. We should use it wherever we go to thank God after surviving a crisis situation. Like in this country, we have seen so many crises taking place, not only in this crisis, like during the COVID uh, epidemic. We were suffering, we were not even going to churches. People are living in their homes and they were not allowed even to go and visit others. Even burials could even be conducted at night. Weddings were being conducted via, you know, you could you watch it in your house, not go for gatherings. In, one, in uh, Psalms 16, verse 4, we are called on the name of the Lord, we call on the name of the Lord in the public prayer, which is likely the case in 116, verse 5 to 7. To 7. The answer to the urgent prayer leads to reflection on God's character, namely that he is gracious, he is merciful, like we see in Exodus 34, verse 6, and he is righteous, he is reliable, he is faithful. This makes the experiences more real to the believer. In uh, verse 8 to 11, we see death, which actually tears, he stumbles, and it covers a wide variety of circumstances than simply the death. It is the, the, the problems we encounter when we are in this world. It shows the thankful person how it, makes, it is good to make use of the deliverance that God gives us for free. I will walk before the Lord that is in love, faith, and obedience towards him. In the second reading, in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 1 to 7, we see Paul talking to Timothy. He was talking to Timothy when he was incarcerated in prison. But he had a lot of faith in Timothy. He reminds Timothy the purpose of his work as an apostle has been to proclaim the gospel, the promise of the life that is in Christ Jesus. Paul thanksgiving leads to encouraging Timothy, no matter what he may encounter, to continue in faithfulness despite whatever hardship he may encounter. We are the Timothys of today. We should be encouraged to continue preaching the word of God without fear. Whatever we may encounter, like these times when there, are, there is so much uh, opposition, even in the church, we should be encouraged to preach the word of God without wavering. Because the word of God tells us not to waver. Them that waver will be spat out by God. You are either on the right or on the wrong. Paul thanks God for Timothy. He knows that both he and Timothy have a very heritage of faith from their ancestors. He encourages Timothy to follow in his footsteps. Whose, whose, whose footsteps are we following ourselves? We are following the footsteps of our Lord and Savior, that is Jesus Christ, who remained faithful even unto death on the cross. Timothy is encouraged to grow and strengthen the gift of God that we have all been bestowed. For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. 
Fear means cowardice or timidity. By contrast, the Holy Spirit enables believers to be brave in all circumstances. Paul was facing execution in a Roman prison when he wrote these words. But we see him encouraging Timothy, who was outside there. And he knew that he would fa Timothy was going to face a lot of opposition, but he encouraged him not to fear. Be encouraged, my dear brothers and sisters, even in this walk of life, which is full of many mountains and many valleys, a lot of opposition, but you shall overcome. Because when Jesus was going to heaven, what did he tell his disciples? I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm going to send you a helper. And the helper came, and that is the Holy Spirit of God. So whatever we encounter in this world, we are more than conquerors because of Jesus Christ. He sent us a power from above, the Holy Spirit, to help us in our walk of life. God bless you. Let us, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this message that you have given us this day about maintaining the altars. Help us to build altars from our homes and so because it starts from Jerusalem before we go to Samaria and to the world so that the church of God may be strong and be built on a strong foundation and that is Jesus Christ. Come and be with us. Come and lead us. Come and guide us in all that we do and say. For we pray all this, trusting in thy name. For in Jesus' name do we pray and believe. Amen.